Okay, let's see what those eigenvectors look like if I um, plot those two eigenvectors in the original uh, space uh, coordinate system. Those are two unit vectors and one of them points in this direction and one points in this direction. And what I've drawn here is the eigenvector, which is just a unit vector, multiplied by the corresponding eigenvalue. So you can see that the first eigenvector, the first principal component, is the one corresponding to the direction along which I have the most variation of the input data. And the second principal component is perpendicular to that, and in this case it's the direction um, in which there is the least variation. Okay, so let's perform our principal component transform um, using this uh, equation for y. And that gives me a new population of vectors, of y vectors, and I'm plotting them here. So as you can see, um, these are not diagonal, um, sort of varying together, they're varying uh, separately. So the components of y vertically and horizontally are independent. So we, construct, we can reconstruct x from the y's using this equation that we've seen. But let's look at using only a subset of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So we've sorted the eigenvalues and eigenvectors from largest to smallest. Let's take the first k of them, namely the, the k largest eigenvalues. And we'll, put, we'll create a matrix A sub k that has the first k rows of A. So then I can um, reconstruct an approximated version of x by taking that a sub k transpose times the first k elements of y, and again adding the mean of x. So to, to represent the input data approximately, I just need the first k elements of y and the first k uh, principal components. And the mean squared error is just uh, x minus this uh, approximated x, which is the same as um, taking the sum of the eigenvalues, all of them, from 1 to n, minus the first k of them. So basically the uh, remaining eigenvalues that I'm not using, I sum those up, and that is the uh, resulting squared error. So this is what it looks like if I uh, take my simple two-dimensional case and just use the first eigenvector instead of both eigenvectors. So I project um, only, uh, I only use y1 here. And so of course I just get y's that have only one dimension, y1, and zero for y2. And if I then use those, um, to reconstruct my original vectors x, I just get an approximated version of that. Um, recall that the original population of x was kind of elongated in this direction. So I've done the best I could here because I've kept the uh, direction here, the dimension that has most variation, and I've basically uh, just approximated out or approximated away the dimension with the least variation. All right, let's look at some uses of PCA for image description. So we'll see that we can use PCA to represent images more concisely and to help with recognition and matching. And we'll look at two ways to do this. First of all, if we have a multi-dimensional image, let's say a color image with RGB pixels, red, green, blue. So we have basically a collection of pixels. Each pixel has three dimensions, RGB. We're not going to consider them as really an image. It's really just a collection, an unordered set or a bag of pixels. So we could potentially represent each pixel using fewer than three dimensions, let's say one or two. And we'll do that by using principal components. And we'll call, in this case, we'll call these principal components eigenpixels, or eigencolors might be another word. We'll also look at another way to use PCA, 
And that's if we have a set of images, not a single image, but a set of images where each one is monochrome or a single color. In this case, our vectors, each vector will represent an entire image. And um, again, we'll do PCA, principal component analysis, where the principal components will be images or basis images. And we can represent any image in our set using a linear combination of those basis images. So we'll call those case, in those case, the principal components will be called eigen images. All right, so here's an example of the first um, way to use PCA. Here's a um, image composed of six bands, X1, X2, X3, up to X6. And this is a um, Landsat data image where each band represents, in this case, um, blue, green, red, near infrared, middle infrared, and far infrared or thermal infrared. So let's see, we might be able to uh, shrink, compress this image to use fewer than six values per pixel. And you can kind of see why that would be possible. For example, the uh, near infrared and middle infrared um, look very similar. So a pixel here sort of pretty much has the same value as the corresponding pixel here. So the idea is that um, we might not need all of these bands to represent our image. Another way to look at it, um, here's our collection of images. There's, there's six bands. Each image has, well, the image has 564 by 564 pixels, or 318,000, where each pixel has six dimensions. So we take this many vectors, these 318,000 vectors, each one six dimensional. We compute the mean covariance and then the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the covariance matrix. So this shows the eigenvalues of, the, of that matrix. Next, we perform the principal components transform. And this is displaying the resulting values of the Ys. So um, what, what we notice here is that the, the first um, element of y, of the y vectors, y1, has the most variation. And this is to be expected because um, y1, the variance of that is lambda1. And we've sorted the eigenvalues to be in descending order. So um, by definition, this is going to be the one with the highest variance. So next, let's um, discard some of those principal components, all but two, and we'll reconstruct the original vectors using that approximation. So we use only y1 and y2 from that previous slide. So this is the elements of the x vectors once we've reconstructed them. And these look pretty close to the original images. Um, here is a plot of the error between the reconstructed images and the original images. All right, let's move on now to the other example of using uh, PCA to analyze images. And this is using where we use the, the vector to represent an entire image instead of a single pixel. So let's say we have a collection of images, um, i1 through ik, like this. We subtract off the mean of each one. Next, we put these images into column vectors. So each image, we essentially scan row in row order like this, and just stack up all the pixels in a single vector like this. And we'll then take all of those vectors and put them into a matrix called B here. So this matrix, um, the number of rows is the number of pixels I had in each image, and the number of columns is the number of images I have. 